All right, welcome back. So in the last video, I showed you how to launch an EC2 instance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to a Linux EC2 instance. And I'm going to show you how to do this from a Mac device, from a Linux device, and from a Windows device. If you're ready, let's begin. All right, so I'm at my EC2 console right now. And you can see that I already have an instance running. And this instance is an Amazon Linux AMI. How do I know that? Well, you can click on that. And when you go down to the description section, you can see the AMI ID, which says Amazon hyphen AMI, which is the Amazon Linux AMI. To connect to this from a Macintosh or a Linux computer, we need to use the terminal. So let's get to the terminal first. All right. And I'm going to connect with this instance with the command SSH. But before I do that, I'm going to navigate to the directory where I have my key pair stored, right? And that is my downloads folder. Now we can start connecting. So I'm going to say SSH. Next, we need to know the default username of the Linux distribution that we're trying to connect to. Different distributions have different default usernames. For example, Amazon Linux AMI has the username called EC2-user. If you're connecting to Fedora, the username is going to be Fedora. If you're connecting to Ubuntu, the username is Ubuntu. For CentOS, it is CentOS. For SUSE Linux, I believe it is root. For Red Hat, it depends on the version of Red Hat that you're connecting with. So before you connect, you need to know the default username. And you can find this easily on the Amazon documentation. If you're not able to find it, let me know in the comment section and I can help you with that. Right now, I'm connecting to an Amazon Linux AMI and the default username for that is ec2-user. So I'm going to say ssh ec2-user at the public IP address, which is available on the ec2 console. So back over here, and I'm going to copy the IP address from here, which is 13.126.179.44. Back at the terminal, I'm going to paste that and then we need to specify the name of the key pair or the key file. So hyphen I and then the key pair name, which is my ec2key.pem. All right, so let's do the command one more time. You first navigate to the directory where you have your key pair stored. The command is ssh, the default username at the public IP address, hyphen I and then your key pair name. You hit enter. It gives you a warning that the authenticity of the host cannot be established. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say yes, hit enter, and I'm connected. A quick way to verify is by looking at the private IP address. You can see that the private IP address is 172.31.26.27. If you go back to the EC2 console, you should have the same private IP address on the EC2 instance. All right, back over here, we can see the same private IP address, 172.31.26.27. Right? So connecting from Mac or Linux computers is a breeze because you have SSH inbuilt. But how do you do it from a Windows device? To show that, I'm going to launch a virtual Windows machine. And to save some time, I already have one ready. To connect from a Windows device, initially you need two pieces of software. Number one is PuTTY and number two is PuTTY Gen. The program called PuTTY is very popular and it is an SSH client which can help you to connect with Linux instances. But why do we need PuTTY Gen? Well, the key pair that we have from the EC2 console has an extension of .pem or pem. You can see that over here it ends with .pem. PuTTY cannot process that. It can only process an extension of .ppk. So we need to convert .pem to .ppk. And to do that, we need PuTTY Gen. These softwares can be downloaded from the internet at no cost at all. If you need a link for download, it is available in the description section. So first of all, I'm going to open up PuTTY Gen I'm going to say run and first we need to load the key file. 
So I'm going to say load and on my desktop I should have that file. There you have it. I'm going to click on that and say open. Successfully imported. Click on OK. And then we need to save the private key. So I'm going to say save private key. It says are you sure you want to save this without a passphrase or a password? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to name it and I'm going to give the same name my EC2 key. I'm just going to change the extension to .ppk and save it. Close this and we have the file over here my EC2 key .ppk. Now we can start working with putty. So I'm going to open up putty from here. In the hostname part, I'm going to say ec2-user at the IP address, which is 13.126.179.44. That looks OK. 13.126.179.44. OK. And next, we need to open this tree over here, which is called as SSH. Inside that, we have an option called auth. I'm going to click on that and here it says provide the private key file for authentication. Click on browse and there's my key file. I'm just going to click on that and say open. And here is the option which is not visible. I'm just going to click on that and straight away it says the server's host key is not cached in the registry. We don't identify it. Are you okay with it? I'm going to say yes and there we are. So now we're connected. We can verify that with the private IP address, which is 172.31.26.27. All right, so that was a short video on how to connect to a Linux EC2 instance. In the next video, I'll show you how to connect to a Windows EC2 instance. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.